going to discuss about the sharpening uh, for your domain filters these are basically the sharpening filters in frequency domain so first of all we have got this uh, ideal uh, filter so when we uh, study about this ideal uh, high pass filter it is actually one minus low pass filter uh, its response is uh, just like a box filter and then there is the butterworth filter for the butterworth filter we have got this alpha element it is again the inverse of a uh, low pass filter and this is the gaussian this is uh, the gaussian high pass filter uh, we can see here that uh, this is the ideal high pass filter so it has got so many ripples and because of these ripples we are getting these rings and this is an ideal low pass filter ideal high pass filter it has got only one ripple and this is an ideal gaussian filter so it has got no ripples and no rings when we use ideal high pass filter uh, we uh, set a certain cutoff frequency uh, so on a lower cutoff frequency we get very less sharpening on a higher cutoff frequency we get a better sharpening and on an even higher cutoff frequency most of the higher frequency components are being passed so uh, we get a better uh, sharpening mm. so these are the results of gaussian high pass filter and these are the results of uh, butterworth high pass filter Again, as we are increasing uh, the cutoff frequency, the result, the sharpening result is increasing. Uh, so, uh, we can see that uh, in the case of high pass filtering, the ringing decreases uh, with increase in the value of pixels uh, or with the increase in the value of cutoff frequency so basically this is an inverse relationship so we can use a larger size of high pass filter because the larger size of high pass filters give you better uh, enhancement of the edges uh, unlike a low pass filter where uh, the ringing used to increase with increase in the number of pixels or increase in the cutoff frequency the it was a direct relationship of ringing and um, size of the high cut of frequency um, but uh, if you use too small uh, cut of frequency in a low pass filter that used to create a lot of blurring extreme blurring so we used to keep that in middle but in the case of high pass filter we can keep it uh, larger so this one is the best amongst all because it gives you minimum ringing because you get minimum ripples uh, minimum ripples and you get uh, most of the energy so for high pass filters we prefer to use relatively larger sizes and for low pass filters we prefer to use small sizes not too small because too small will give a lot of blurriness uh, now this is unsharp masking so unsharp masking in frequency in spatial domain is given as um, f of uh, high pass is actually equal to the actual image and we make a smooth smooth version or a low pass version of that image and we subtract that smooth version from the image so when we subtract that smooth version we guess uh, we get a sharpened image or a high pass image um, this is called unsharp masking unsharp marking is simply subtraction of the smooth version of image from the image so when we go into high post filtering it is very much similar to unsharp masking uh, except that we multiply a variable a with the image such that this a is uh, either one or it's larger than one and then we simply subtract the smooth version of that image so this multiplication of a will convert this uh, high pass filter or this unsharp masking into high boost filtering now we are actually boosting up the high frequency components another way to write this high boost uh, 
filtering is such that we not only multiply this image with an a but we multiply it with an a minus one so when we are doing a minus one here so we need to add an additional f of x minus y uh that's it so, so these are two versions of writing the equation of a high boost filtering so high boost filtering is just like unsharp masking except that we have this variable a multiplied with this image uh when we go into frequency domain the unsharp masking is simple we simply convert this uh high pass of spatial domain element into high pass a frequency domain element and we know that um, in a frequency uh, in uh, we know that high pass filtering is actually equal to one minus low pass filtering so the general formula of a high pass filter is simply used um, as the formula for unsharp masking when we do it in frequency domain and when we want to write down uh, the high boost filtering in frequency domain again we are simply converting this element from spatial domain to a frequency domain and this a minus one is coming as it is and see uh, this element where we are actually subtracting the low pass component from the frequency component is actually sort of a uh, high pass uh, component so we can replace this component with this or and if we convert it into frequency domain then it becomes a high pass so we have taken this a minus one as this the, this f of x one is written as one and these two components together have been written as high pass component in uh, frequency domain so this is how we convert uh, we write high boost filtering in frequency domain and uh, high boost filtering in um, spatial domain and um, unsharp masking in frequency domain and unsharp masking in uh, sp spatial domain now there is another modification of high boost filtering uh, if we uh, write a in place of uh, a minus one this a minus one is written as a and with this uh, high pass component this high pass filter component uh, is multiplied with an element or a coefficient b such that this a is always larger than zero it is some number like one two three and this b is larger than a for example if it's, if a is one then b is two in such a case uh, this high boost filtering will become a, a high frequency emphasis if high boost filtering used to boost the high frequency components now this uh, high frequency emphasis will not only boost but it will emphasize the high frequency elements and the value of a is normally between uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 it can be half or it can be 1 by 4 or it can be anything between them and the value of b is between uh, 1.5 and 2 so we can convert high boost filtering into high frequency uh, emphasis by simply converting a minus one with a small a and multiplying the high frequ pass filter component with b now uh, homomorphic filtering homomorphic filtering is such a filtering in which we uh, are doing two things we are simultaneously uh, brightness uh, range compression we are simultaneously performing brightness range compression and contrast uh, enhancement so how do we uh, perform brightness range compression if we want to do brightness range compression uh, we will compress the range of brightness if we have uh, pixels high intensity pixels from a range from a set of spread over a large range we will compress those high intensity pixels and what is the meaning of contrast enhancement if we have some dark pixels we will make them further darker and if we have some bright pixels we will make them further brighter so at the same time we are uh, playing with both the high frequency components and the um, 
we are actually playing with the high frequency components and we are increasing the intensity of higher uh, frequency components much higher and we are reducing the frequency uh, the intensity of low intensity components further lower okay how do we do that uh, any image is a product of uh, illuminance and reflectance uh, illuminance is represented with uh, i of x y and reflectance is reflected with r of x y uh, since fourier transform is not distributive in multiplication so we convert this product into a sum we apply an ln a natural log on both on this product so when we apply a natural log it will become ln of i plus ln of r uh, now we can apply the transform uh, the fourier transform so when we apply the fourier transform on these two lns it will become uh, z of uv now z has came from spatial domain to frequency domain f i uv and f r uv where f i is the fourier transform of ln of i and uh, f r uv is the fourier transform of ln of r x y now we can apply the filter uh, when we apply the filter filter will simply multiply with both the components once we have are done with the homomorphic filter application then we will uh, bring the results back into the spatial domain by applying the inverse fourier so inverse fourier is applied on z so it will become s x y and when it is applied on uh, these uh, these products so it will simply become uh, i uh, inverse of x y because it is uh, the filtered uh, particle now uh, a filtered part of the illumination and it is the filtered uh, part of the reflection uh, reflectance uh, we have got these images uh, these parts now this is basically the uh, Fourier inverse of the multiplied uh, image with the filter so we can actually apply an exponential to so that this sum is again uh, becoming a product so now this is again that same illumination reflectance model of the image which we started from the beginning so we can simply say that if we had an image we took its a uh, natural log after natural log we applied the dft then we used uh, applied that filter after that we applied inverse dft and then we took exponential to get the enhanced image uh, this I illuminance actually uh, represents the slow spatial variations or low frequency components uh, and the reflectance uh, tends to vary abruptly particularly uh, at the junctions of dissimilar objects uh, like edges and it represents high frequency components here you can see that this is your edge uh, impulse response of your filter uh, so you start from here and you reach here so these are basically your high frequency uh, components and these are your low frequency components so this is a filter example which suppresses uh, this is a filter which is suppressing the low frequency components it is reducing their value and it is enhancing the high frequency components we can see it uh, in this figure that uh, this is the original figure and on the right hand side the black portion uh, is actually made made more blacker and the white portion is made even more uh, brighter so the contrast is enhanced uh, this is because of the homomorphic filtering with this we have completed the topic of sharpening filters the unsharp masking frequency emphasis filtering and homomorphic filtering homomorphic filtering is a very interesting topic that is different from simple sharpening it is just it is not only playing with the high intensity pixels it is also playing with the low intensity pixels thank you uh, do like the video i love his